Uh, the Sun Sugar uh, was, I think it was Sygenta, I think it's a seed company that was bought by Monsanto that had developed it. It has better taste than the Sun Gold and it's sweeter, believe Come it or on. not. Yeah, it's much and much better tomato. Sun Sweet? It's, it's Are called you sun, those? Sun, sun, sun Sugar. It's a better tomato. Are you growing those? But people, will, people won't grow them because <laughs> it's just, you know, politically incorrect because of the company. The, Are you growing bought by, are you, I'm growing them because it's a better <laughs> tomato, sure. Uh, why not? It's a better tomato. Where are they? It's done the last time. Let's go, go, go try. I think sun golds are better. I'm going in. Okay. There you go. You got any salt in that card, old man? Yeah, that's. When I was a kid, I mean, someone would bring the salt at 8 o'clock at night. We go raid uh, tomato, neighbor's tomato uh, garden. Tomato. Taste the stuff. You, you want to get a sugar hit. It's kind of a jolt. Oh, can I try one? You like it? Yeah. It's okay. It smells like a carrot. Check it out. <laughs> Don't it? So, yeah, it does, but it doesn't even look like a carrot yet. Not yet. It's a baby carrot. But you didn't look like you when they, you were that age either. <laughs> Good one. We fall in love with this. With Your this soil's soil. like clay, right? Yeah, it's, I think it's a clay. It's a silt loam clay soil, yeah. Clay soil. Do you know the name of it, David? Pecatonica siltlomus, which is right here. What's Pecatonic siltlomus? Pecatonica refers to a river and a type of soil. Pecatonica silt loam is yeah. the ideal soil for corn. Pecatonica. Pe Pecatonica. You got it. Pe silt loam. Silt loam. Silt loam. Silt loam. Silt Perfect loam. blend. Perfect blend. Minerals. It makes sweet beets. Clay. It makes great. It makes clay. Great beets. Perfect beets. Everything perfect. Soil envy, I guess you would call it. <laughs> we had a garden and um, we'd come out there on weekends from Chicago and just work. It was just recreational labor. But the garden got bigger and bigger and became part of our household economy. And then, you know, it got out of hand. And uh, that's how it started. I just said, I said, one day I remember saying to myself, I don't need a garden, I need a farm. And we ended up buying a farm. But back then, you could buy the farmland prices had crashed to 25 cents on the dollar. We bought we bought 170 plus acres for less than a two-bedroom condo would cost at the time in Chicago. It, yeah, I want to get this farm so it just feels right. Dave's going to get it so it feels right just in time for my wife and I to buy it <laughs> when he goes to his retirement. <laughs> you know, it's got to feel you know, right and balanced. Um, we began to realize several years ago that the um, uh, weather was making it harder and harder to grow vegetables. You just have these, 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 it just jerks you around and it's not, it's not easy to grow vegetables in that kind of situation. So and we had to be doing something to be in to offset that, to be in to hedge that up. So we're doing more and more livestock for that very reason. So I tell people who want to, um, uh, who want to come work on our farm, they got to read two books. They have to read uh, uh, The Unsettling of America by Wendell Berry. And they have to read a book that has nothing to do about farming, but a lot to do about this farm, which is Albert Murray's book about uh, stomping the blues, about uh, blues and jazz. And if they could understand those two books together, then they could understand what we're doing What was the here. first one? Wendell Berry's Unsettling of America. And then my favorite um, Wendell Berry quote, he went something like, um, only when you have an understanding of limits is um, elegance possible. And elegance is endlessly interesting. I love that. So I think yeah, I think there are limits. You got to you got to find limits and work within them. Um, but anyways, you, you said you had an idea for a sardine. Oh yeah, so sardines done, however, grilled um, and making like a sort of a fricassee with some. Uh, some of the beet, the chioga beets mm -hmm. roasted off, and then mm -hmm. some of the duck hearts, and then maybe a few shavings of the uh, chioga as a uh, mm -hmm. salad on top. Sounds really good. That might be cool. Mm -hmm. I think the duck heart with the, hi, good morning. 40 pounds, okay, go ahead. Uh, arugula, let's say two pounds. And now you're helping. Good. Uh, maybe three pounds. Okay. Uh, potato onion.
shoot the pressure. The radio plate. This guy, as soon as the first plate starts, he starts screaming. Okay! Unacceptable! <laughs> Don't forget about your beats. They, they, have any, they haven't even gotten it. Okay. Because there's oh, there's, 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 there